Hi, uh, we are in this module on nature of materials. This is the second lecture in which we will be looking at lattice structure and uh, defects. So, as you can see on screen, the electron configuration, bonding, etc., were covered in the previous lecture. And today we are going to talk about lattice structure and uh, some of the uh, defects in, in the uh, materials. Okay. Now, these are some of the books which I used as I keep telling uh, Mamlok and Zanuski, uh, Callister, Ilson and Domone's book. So, all these books and a lot of information from the internet have been used for making this uh, module. Now, uh, classification of materials uh, can be done based on chemical bonds. For example, as you see here, the three major type of bond, metallic bond, uh, for, uh, covalent and ionic bond and also uh, covalent bonds alone. So, in the metallic bonds of course, metals and the typical metals which we use in construction steel, iron, aluminum, copper etc. Okay. And also covalent and ionic bonds, uh, they are mainly present in most of the inorganic or non-metallic solids like ceramics and concrete is one very good example of uh, ceramic material, bricks, glass, aggregates, all this. So, there in these you can see crystalline structure uh, more mostly and then uh, there are other type of materials which are mainly organic solids where uh, examples are asphalt, plastic, wood, etc. where we see random molecular structure um, you know. Again, I one more thing I want to tell, even though we said crystalline structure, it is not that they are very well crystal, I mean uh, crystallized in nature, but more or less in general we can say they are crystalline in uh, nature. Okay. Now, uh, let us look at the metallic material which is the focus uh, on today's uh, lecture now on and then we will go into non-metallic materials later in the future uh, lectures. So, in the metallic material, first let us see the process of solidification. How do we make metals? We get the raw materials or uh, you know raw materials for making the metal and then we melt them. So, increase the temperature so high so that the material melts and then we allow that material to cool down. So, in this cooling process, the solidification happens in the way we want. So, that is what is the engineering, metallurgical engineering. Uh, plays a big role in that. So, uh, one important thing to note is most of the metallic bonds are non-directional in nature. Why it is happening uh, is because uh, you know the crystal growth when it happens or when the molten material is cooled down or the when the temperature comes down, what happens is crystal starts forming. Okay and depending on the rate at which it is cooled, the, uh, the way in which the crystals grow also uh, matter okay? or the size and size of the crystals or the uh, grains which we will call uh, later on we will talk more detail about that. So, these grains are formed that size and uh, uh, the uh, size of the grains uh, and the imperfections and many things inside the metal in the 3D space that is heavily dependent on the rate of cooling and the temperature which we uh, adopt etc. Uh, rate of cooling mainly. Now, what happens here is an example of a uh, titanium crystal uh, bar. You can see it is uh, a lot of crystals on this. It, these are all individual uh, you know uh, individually grown crystals you can see there. And you can see the nature is different in the center of this thing and as you go away from the center like over here, it is, it is slightly different. Next slide, I will show you more detail on that. Now, here you can see how the cooling rate matters. Okay? So, the top picture on this slide is the cross section of an ingot okay? or we can call it a rod. And on the bottom, you are seeing the uh, the side phase or the uh, cross section in the longitudinal phase is what you are seeing in the bottom. Okay, so if I am talking like this, so 
something like this. So, this bottom portion this much is shown here and this is shown here or any, any cross section for that matter is shown on the top, surf, top image and the bottom uh, is shown in the uh, bottom image. Now, uh, it is uh, the image is for I mean it is collected from the literature. So, this says nickel copper alloy, but it is not necessarily that one I am just try using this for as an example. <laughs> now, effect of cooling rate and effect of impurities uh, in case of alloys. Okay. So, what this does is because of this temperature changes happening, there is a possibility of segregation between the elements present in the molten material okay. and also that will induce some change in the grain size and shape also. Okay. So, example is here you can see the uh, top picture the cross section when we look at this this portion here when we look at you can see that near the surface it is actually very fine grain there okay. and then you have some region towards the center where you have elongated grains okay. and then towards the center you have again equaxed or grains where the axis in both directions are more or less similar in size. Okay, columnar grain, small equiax grain, so small equiax grain along the border, columnar grain in between and then towards the center you have large equiax grains. So, here you can see very fine grains, small equiax grain means very fine grains, the, uh, the size of the grain is very small and large equiax grain means the size is larger but more or less similar size in all the directions. So, that is what equaxed means. Okay. Now, same thing I mean although these two images are from two different literature I thought it is good to show them together uh, as you can see uh, the same you know kind of you can see this this is what is happening. So, the side view uh, how, how it would look. Now, here the important thing is at the bottom also you have similar because the material the if it is a rod it is cooling from all the surfaces not only the circular surface but also from the bottom surface it is cooling and that is why you see this kind of um, you know this kind of uh, uh, distribution of the uh, grains so the point is near surface of the metal might have a different grain structure as you go in little bit inward you might have another grain structure as you go a little bit further you might have a third type of grain structure. So, this distance from the surface might influence uh, the rate of cooling at a particular point inside the material and that will influence the type of grains which are formed or the size of grains which are formed in a metal structure. Now, let us look at the space lattice. So, what is it? It is the imaginary network of lines. You can see a lot of lines in these drawings on the um, screen and also you see intersections of those lines. So, what we assume is that at every intersection of these line there is an atom present. Okay. So, space lattice is the imaginary network of lines with atoms at intersections representing the arrangement of atoms. Okay. So, you can see here in this sketch here you have a lot of these imaginary vertical and horizontal lines and then you have all the intersection points you have a circle which is drawn or a sphere which is drawn and that indicates the atoms present. Now, so by definition atoms molecules of or ions arranged this is or sorry or ions arranged in a repetitive 3 D pattern in long range order means larger distance covered that is what is crystal structure. Now, you might have also heard the word amorphous materials where the crystals are not very well defined for a larger volume. So, even though they are arranged, but in short range order that is what is amorphous uh, materials. Now, atomic arrangement depends also on the atomic size and the valency. Now, we will talk about this unit cell here. You have this representation of the space lattice on the top right diagram and each 
uh, cubical region or what uh, you know that each unit cell it is not necessarily cubic, but each uh, each unit cell uh, can be explained in terms of the their dimension of each of the corners sorry each of the uh, edges and also the angle between uh, those edges. So, the angle you can say alpha, beta and gamma and the dimensions are A, B and C as you see in this uh, sketch here. So, uh, this is essentially what is uh, the building block for uh, any metal uh, which we talk. Now, how many types of space lattice are there or identified? There are about 14 types of them you might have studied this earlier also. You can see uh, all of them are shown here more detail on this you, I mean this these pictures I am taking from the uh, internet uh, so that it is easy for you to uh, you know visualize things in a more easy manner. So, you have triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, rhombohedral, tetrahed tetragonal, hexagonal and cubic or isotropic ok and within this you have other subcategories like uh, in case of orthorhombic you have simple base centered face centered body centered like that. So, there are top four total 14 uh, space lattice arrangements are possible and in case of most of the metals what we see is mainly the not all these are uh, observed in most metals what we see mainly are uh, face centered um, cubic, body centered cubic and hexagonal close packing ok. So, body centered cubic, face centered cubic and hexagonal close packing these are the three uh, lattice structures which we see in case of metals. Now, uh, this, those two cubic and one hexagonal space lattice are found in most metals where I just discussed that from the previous slide. So, these are a little bit closer look at uh, those uh, lattice structures. So, let us look at the face centered cubic. So, you can see here uh, over here. So, you can see one there for this cube there are six faces. So, one on one face, second face, third face and similarly for the other uh, three faces which you are not seeing here. So, that is shown on the second diagram you can see this one and second phase and then this is the third phase. So, if I am going to write here also so for you to see this is 1 and then let us say this is 2 and then let us say this is 3. So, this is 1, 2, 3 and the oh, other sides which you are not able to see. 2, 3 then this can be 4 and then this is 5 and then this is 6th one here. So, there are say 6 faces for the cube and each face has at the center of the face there is one uh, atom. Now, in the case of body centered cubic you can see this is the one atom which is present at the center of the cube that is right at the center and so that is this one here. Okay, so, I am going to call it 1. Okay. Now, uh, it also has atoms on the corners that is 1, 2, 3 if we call. So, that is 1, 2 and 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then of course, there is a 8th one there which you do not see in the first image. So, this is how they are. Now, one thing to note here is only this uh, number 1 atom is completely occupied within the body centered cubic structure whereas, yeah I, I made a little mistake here. So, it is ok. I am going to call this one as 0 so that it need not be written again. The 0th one is uh, at the center and uh, all others are uh, in the corners. Okay. So, you can see that uh, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, they are all uh, not fully occupied by the same 
uh, cube. Now, in case of HCP, again you have similar uh, type, but it, it is in a, not in the shape of a cube, but you have the section is like a hexagon in nature. So, next one. Now, there are two parameters which are very important when we talk about this, uh, this uh, lattice structure. One is coordination number and the other one is atomic packing efficiency uh, that we will talk in the next slide. So, this slide let us focus on coordination number. It is also known as ligand C, whereas li each ligands are atoms that are bonded to the central atom. Okay. So, that is how it is counted the coordination number is counted. So, what is coordination number? It is the number of nearest neighbors for a central atom. Okay. Now, for case of FCC that is the first one here, this one here for the case of FCC this coordination number is 12. How do we calculate that or how do we uh, get that number? So, as you can see here if this portion here is the FCC structure and this is continuing the remaining on the right side this is like continuing the next uh, unit cell. Okay. So, if this is the one of the unit cell I can say one if this is the central atom which I am considering that central atom has these four one two three four these four that is four here and then this, this, this and this that is another 4, that is another 4 and then these 4 plus 4 that is equal to 12. So, it has 12 nearest neighbors. So, okay. so that is what is uh, coordination number for FCC is 12 that is how we get that. Now, for BCC you can say similar way you can uh, for this as a center atom if I am considering I have these 4 and then I have these 4 that is 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. Okay. Uh, that is the coordination number for BCC structure and if you take HCP structure the coordination number is going to be uh, let us say if you consider this as a central atom okay, that will have another uh, 6 atoms on the other side and that will again form uh, 12. Okay. So, this is how the uh, uh, coordination number is uh, calculated. Now, if you look at the atomic pa packing factor for lattice structure, so this is dependent on the equivalent number of atoms associated with each unit cell and atomic uh, radius. So, you can see here FCC uh, for FCC it is 0 0.74 for HCP also it is 0 0.74 and BCC it is 0 0.68. So, if you look in the previous slide for FCC and HCP these numbers are also similar just uh, look at. Okay. Now, here again the picture on the bottom left if you see you can see that all the atoms are not completely occupied by one unit cell, the some of them are also shared by the adjacent uh, unit cell. So, on 6 faces uh, you know half of the atoms are shared and on 8 corners that means 1 eighth of that particular atom on every corner is shared by unit cell. Now, then what you do is you calculate kind of the total volume of the unit cell and the volume of the atom the share of the atom within that unit cell. Okay. So, if you total you uh, so then you when you divide that volume of atoms in the unit cell and the volume of the unit cell if you divide that by knowing what type of the atom. So, you know the radius of uh, each you know what is this, this, this distance here and you know what is this distance also. So, if you know the radius of both these then you can calculate this atomic packing factor and this atomic packing factor is actually related to the density etc are actually uh, based on or can be related to the atomic uh, packing factor. So, you can look at this you can pause for a minute and then go through these calculations and then uh, 
understand it better and if you have any doubts we can definitely talk about this in the review session.